Mark chapter 2 verse 28 says, Therefore the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. These words of Christ are a declaration of His absolute authority, not only over the Sabbath, but over all things. In this moment, Jesus is directly addressing the Pharisees, whose legalistic interpretations of the law had distorted the true purpose of the Sabbath. They had made it a burden, but Jesus, as the Son of Man, reveals its true intent, to reflect God's grace, rest, and provision. Christ calls Himself the Son of Man, a title rich with messianic implications, referencing Daniel chapter 7 verses 13 through 14, where the Son of Man is given dominion and glory over all nations. This title does not simply highlight Christ's humanity. It emphasizes His role as the exalted King and Judge of all the earth. This declaration in Mark chapter 2 verse 28 asserts that Jesus is the creator and ruler of the Sabbath, meaning He is the one who defines how it is to be observed. The Pharisees, with their man-made traditions, had no authority to judge the actions of the one who established the Sabbath. In Exodus chapter 20 verse 8, God commanded the Israelites to observe the Sabbath as a day of rest, a symbol of His completed work in creation. But here in Mark chapter 2, Jesus unveils the reality that He is the fulfillment of the Sabbath. Colossians chapter 2 verses 16 through 17 affirms that the Sabbath was a shadow of things to come, but the substance is found in Christ. Jesus offers true rest, rest from the works of the law, rest from striving, rest from sin, and eternal rest for those who trust in Him. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 9 through 10 speaks of a Sabbath rest for the people of God, one that is found in Christ alone. The authority of Christ is what confronts every soul that reads this passage. He is not merely a teacher. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. This means He holds authority over all of creation, time, and eternity. The question is, how will you respond to this authority? Many, like the Pharisees, harden their hearts and cling to their religious traditions. They reject the Lordship of Christ and refuse to submit to His Word. They are content with the outward appearance of religion, but deny the true power found in submission to the Lord. Jesus didn't come to uphold man-made religion. He came to fulfill the law, to demonstrate that He is the only one who can offer true rest for the weary soul. Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 30 calls us to come to Him, the Lord of the Sabbath, and find rest for our souls. This is the heart of the Gospel. Christ, the Lord of all, gives rest to those who turn to Him in repentance and faith. Are you still trying to earn favor with God through your own works? Do you think that religious traditions and your own efforts will save you? Mark chapter 2 verse 28 demands a response. If Jesus is truly Lord of the Sabbath, then He is Lord of everything, including your life. There is no middle ground. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 declares that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. But you cannot confess Him as Lord if you are unwilling to submit to His authority in every area of your life. This passage is a call to forsake legalism, works-based salvation, and self-righteousness. It is an invitation to come to the only one who can give you true rest, the one who created the Sabbath and who offers eternal rest through His finished work on the cross. Will you submit to Him, or will you, like the Pharisees, reject the Lord of the Sabbath? The time is now to make a decision. Jesus stands as the judge, and He will return to establish His kingdom. The question remains, will you enter into His rest, or will you face Him as judge in the last days? The authority of Christ is absolute. There is no escaping His Lordship. Will you submit now and receive His rest, or will you face His wrath later? The choice is yours, but the truth remains unchangeable. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath, and His reign extends over every aspect of creation, time, and eternity. The call to repentance is urgent, for the time is short, and He will return soon.